Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're taking a look at the Ballistic Advantage 12 and a half inch 308 barrel. But before we get into the video, if you don't know, Gun Deals is a website that compiles some of the best deals in the industry. Whatever it is that you happen to be looking for, you can probably find it for the best possible price on their website. So whatever it is that you happen to be looking for, go ahead and check them out. Once again, that is gun.deals. They don't buy or sell anything. Most importantly, they don't take your money. They only point you in the right direction. Now, with all that out of the way, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, as all of that is free and does help us out quite a bit. And go ahead and comment your favorite barrel length in the comments down below. Now, full disclosure, on this 12 and a half inch 308 barrel from Ballistic Advantage, this is actually part of my upper receivers that I personally build and sell. None of that's really important right now, but just know that I did pay my own money for these barrels, but I might be a little biased since I use them in my own personal builds. Now, getting into... The specifics of this 12 and a half inch 308 barrel. We will talk about the full build later on as just kind of tertiary information, but the main focus of this video is going to be on the 12 and a half inch 308 barrel. So it is, of course, chambered in 308, which will accept 762 by 51 and 308. One in 10 twist, 4150 chrome molly vanadium steel, QPQ nitride finish, which all looks very good. This is a 12 and a half inch carbine length gas system personally carbine length gas system on a 12 and a half inch barrel is generally the right call there are some mid-length 12 and a half inch barrels but they generally open up the gas port to an insane degree there are also some intermediate gas system lengths between a carbine and a mid that are also appropriate however for the most part a carbine barrel that is properly gassed will provide you the best results gives you plenty of dwell time and in this case if you want to run a suppressor on it, you'll probably want to throw on an adjustable gas block. Now, the profile on the barrel is what they call their tactical government profile. It's not really a government profile. So in the center here, you have a pretty simple straight taper of like 0.750. And at the end, of course, it's a 0.750 gas block journal. And it has basically just a straight taper and then a slight little step down here at the end. Overall weight on the barrel is like 30 ounces, like 29.5 ounces, something right in that range. So while it is not a heavy barrel, it is definitely more of a middleweight barrel. It is still going to be heavier than a lot of other profiles and barrels on the market. Now, again, it is only 12 and a half inches long. So even with a AR-10 slash DPMS pattern, it's still a fairly short and handy total package. Now, when we get into why you would want a 12 and a half inch 308, it's honestly fairly silly. There aren't really a lot of perfect applications for a 12 and a half inch 308 again if you need high firepower of 308 in as short of a barrel as possible personally 12 and a half inches is the shortest i would ever go in a 308 i know that there are some 10.5 308 barrels on the market personally i would stay away from those with a 12 and a half inch barrel ballistically with like 147 to 150 grain ammo depending on the specific load that you're talking about you should be getting between 24 and 2500 FPS. And then if you go to the heavier 168, 175s, you should be getting about 2200 FPS. 22, 2250, somewhere in that range, which is about the same as 762 by 39, maybe a little bit faster than 16 inch 762 by 39. But of course, keep in mind you're throwing much heavier bullets with much, much higher BCs like your standard 123 grain FMJ. Now getting into gassing on the 12 and a half inch three-way barrel from Ballistic Advantage, it's gassed appropriately for what I would consider sort of a general purpose roll, meaning that it has enough gas. The gas port size itself is a 0.066 on, of course, a 12 and a half inch barrel carbine length gas system. So that gas port size has enough gas pressure, enough dwell time to cycle really crappy steel case ammunition. I put a lot of Wolf Classic through it but it will also cycle Tula and some other, you know, surplus overseas manufactured 308 ammo. Personally, for a inexpensive, somewhat inexpensive 308 barrel, that is appropriate. Now on this specific one and the way that I would recommend running them in general is to throw on an adjustable gas block. So this has a break arms adjustable gas block. It's just a standard 0 0.750 4140 gas block with a very simple adjustment methodology. This one here is also pinned in place. And with the adjustable gas block, I have it somewhere between like six or eight clicks in. So it is restricting the gas a little bit and giving me that perfect, you know, 330, four o'clock ejection with steel cased ammunition and still being fairly soft with 
M80 ball or even some more expensive hotter match loads as well. So if you're only running full power military spec ammunition, it's definitely going to be a little bit over gas for that. But again, for more general purpose role for cycling anything you want to feed through it right out of the box, it will absolutely do that. Personally, I would run it with adjustable gas blocks, especially since this one here will probably end up being suppressed with my new YHM. I forget the model of that one there. Their Resonator K, I believe, is what I got. This will end up being suppressed and a adjustable gas block on a 308 is very necessary to get it to run properly, especially when you're talking about shooting it suppressed and unsuppressed with a wide variety of ammunition. Now that's about it for the basics of the barrel, the machining quality, the finish all looks very good. The assembly, the fit, all of that sort of stuff went very well. You have a 5 8 by 24 thread pitch and you also have the 300 blackout, or not the 300 blackout, but you know, the large 308 feed ramps in the back. So overall, for a barrel that costs anywhere between 150 and 200 bucks retail, you get a very well machined barrel that is also fairly accurate. Now we did accuracy testing on this barrel. Ballistic Advantage, these are backed by their one MOA guarantee of three rounds in a row. For me, accuracy testing, I always do five rounds in a row from a magazine. And we tested this with three or four different loads. We tried some 145 grain Wolf Classic, just their military classic ammunition, and that actually grouped very well. That ammunition is surprisingly consistent in all of my 308s. So that load came in right at about one and a half MOA for a five round group, which I'm very happy with. And then we have some Magtech M80 ball, which is basically garbage ammunition. Now I know that M80 is a machine gun round. It's you know designed to be fed into machine guns and therefore not be particularly accurate. However, that ammunition has grouped anywhere between 6 and 12 MOA through every 308 that I've tested it in, which is absolutely awful. So that basically just splattered a group across the paper, which was awful. And then we did, I believe, 155 grain AMAX, which grouped okay, 168 grain Hornady Black AMAX, and then 168 grain ELD. And the ELDs were extremely hot. You could tell it in the recoil, the ejection pattern, very, very hot ammunition. However, they didn't group all that well. So overall, through all of those loads, minus the M80 ball, we were averaging about one and a half to two MOA. And with, again, ammunition that it likes, you're definitely able to get it closer to that one MOA range. Now, that was just the ammunition that I have on hand. I'm sure with better ammunition, a uh, federal gold medal match has been a really good load. I just don't have access to any of that right now for me personally. So... Overall, I am happy with the accuracy out of this barrel. On top of that, we were able to take it out to almost 500 yards without issue, even just again with that Wolf Military Classic, which again performed incredibly consistently. And we were able to make shots again at reduced size targets out to about 430 yards. Now again, 12 and a half inch 308 isn't really the most sensible barrel length and caliber combination in the world. It doesn't really have that many real world applications where it really shines. Now you could in theory use it as some sort of smaller, lighter hunting gun, like a hog gun, where you might want, you know, high firepower, good capacity, 20, 25 round max, so on and so forth. But you don't want it to be too long and too heavy, like an 18 inch, 20 inch or something like that. This does give you a lot of firepower, a lot of firepower in a very small, fairly lightweight package. Currently with the MSR on there, I believe it's like eight pounds, which would be heavy for a 12 and a half inch 5.56. But again, we are talking about 308 and some of that additional weight does allow us to keep the recoil impulse down. Now, getting into the full build quickly, I threw on an A2 flash hider after it bent out one of the prongs on my Breek Arms three prong flash hider. 
They actually redesigned these flash hiders recently to make sure that this doesn't happen, but I have actually seen this happen on a couple of their flash hiders now. So A2 flash hider, perfectly fine, keeps the muzzle nice and low, does a little bit of flash reduction, though on a 12 and a half inch 308, there is still the occasional fireball. Now, both the upper and handguard are the Aero Precision M5 platform. So the handguard is the 12.7 Atlas R1. Now, the S1 is the one without the full-length Picatinny. However, I do prefer the full-length Picatinny on top. Three sides of M-Lock, 3, 6, and 9, as well as their taper lock system, which is a fairly decent lockup for the money. Decent handguards, the machining quality, the fit, the finish, the way they feel, all that sort of stuff. Aesthetically, they're pleasing handguards. And again, they're not too terribly expensive. The upper receiver is, of course, the Aero Precision M5 upper receiver with the Ford Assist threaded roll pin for the Ford Assist, which is, again, a nice touch. Overall, again, the machining quality, all of that sort of stuff. It's just a nice upper receiver. It's nothing special, but it is, again, just nice with a decent level of machining. Now, this one here has a Toolcraft Nickel Boron 308 uh, BCG in here. This one here comes with the enhanced extractor, basically it just has the higher power extractor spring, o-ring, and insert, so it has incredible extraction. You'll probably notice it just throwing stuff for miles as it also has a very strong ejector as well. Overall, I'm a big fan of Toolcraft Nickel Boron BCGs. I've used hundreds of them at this point, and I haven't had a single issue. Charging handle, just a standard Aero Precision M5 308 charging handle, so overall, a fairly simple build and with it I was again able to take out to about 430 yards with very little issue in high winds with just crappy ammunition the accuracy that I was able to get out of it was fine not necessarily a sub MOA tack driver all day long now if you find a load that it really likes then maybe you'll be able to achieve that MOA or sub MOA accuracy consistently however at this current time I really wasn't able to now, I will be taking this out later on to about 700 yards, and we'll see how it performs at more extended distances where that slower velocity is really going to cause a lot of drop out to distance. But again, so far, so good. So the most important thing for me on this build is that it is very fun to shoot. When you combine that with the adjustable gas block and tuning it properly, you get a very soft recoiling 308 that is very fast. The trigger, if you're curious, is the Geisley G2S which does seem to exhibit some bump fire characteristics under recoil, because there is a lot of recoil. Just something there with the combination of the lightness of the trigger, it's about three, three and a half pounds is what it feels like, means that you do get some bump fire characteristics every now and again, which again in 308 is fairly fun. And on top of that, it also works very well for precision shooting out to distance or accuracy testing. The barrel itself, is extremely reliable it is a little bit over gas from the factory for full power military ammunition however throwing on an adjustable gas block completely resolves that issue and means that even for a three weight this is a very manageable gun to shoot you can shoot it very quickly very accurate take it out to distance if you want to is it ideal for any of those applications no it's really not but it is again extremely fun so with all that out of the way, guys, let me know what you guys think of short-barreled 308s or other big boy calibers. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments down below. And with all that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace off.